in a manger laid. Thus spake the seraph, and forthwith appeared a heavenly throng of angels praising God, and thus addressed their joyful song. Glory be to God on high, and to the earth be peace, good will henceforth from heaven to men begin and never Chelsea's there. 
What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthems sweet, while shepherds watch a keeping? This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds worship and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him praise, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean estate, where ox and ass are feeding? Come, have no fear, God's Son is here, his love all loves exceeding. Nails special pierce him through, the cross be born for me. Bring him incense, gold and myrrh, all tongues and peoples own him. The King of kings salvation brings, let every heart and
the 25th day of December, when ages beyond number had run their course from the creation of the world, when God in the beginning created heaven and earth, when century upon century had passed since the Almighty set his bow in the clouds after the great flood as a sign of covenant and peace. In the 21st century, since Abraham, our father in faith, came out of the Ur of the Chaldees, in the 13th century, since the people of Israel were led by Moses in the exodus from Egypt. Around the thousandth year, since David was anointed king. In the 65th week of the prophecy of Daniel. In the 194th Olympiad in the year 752, since the foundation of the city of Rome, in the 42nd year of the reign of Caesar Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace, Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to consecrate the world by his most loving presence, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and when nine months had passed since his conception, was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judah, and was made man. The Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the flesh.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with that word peace, welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral for this uh, midnight mass, the celebration of our Lord's Nativity, the Prince of Peace who comes among us tonight and who offers his life to us. Welcome visitors to St. Patrick's, welcome parishioners that we may gather tonight and as God's family give praise to this child that is ours, who comes to give us life. And so my friends, as we commence our celebration of this Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendour of true light, grant, we pray, that we 
who have known the mysteries of his light on earth, may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light on those who live in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. You have made their gladness greater. You have made their joy increase. They rejoice in your presence as men rejoice at harvest time as men are happy when they are dividing the spoils. For the yoke that was weighing on him, the bar across his shoulders, the rod of his oppressor, this you break as on the day of Midian. For all the footgear of battle, every cloak rolled in blood, is burned and consumed by fire. For there is a child born for us, a son given to us, and dominion is laid on his shoulders, and this is the name they give him, Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. White is his dominion in a peace that has no end. For the throne of David and for his royal power, which he establishes and makes secure in justice and integrity. From this time onwards and forever, the jealous love of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. God's grace has been revealed and it has made salvation possible for the whole human race and taught us that what we have to do is to give up everything that does not lead to God and all our worldly ambitions. We must be self-restrained and live good and religious lives here in this present world while we are waiting in hope for the blessing which will come with the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Christ Jesus. He sacrificed himself for us in order to set us free from all wickedness and to purify a people so that it could be his very own and would have no ambition except to do good. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Luke. Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. This census, the first, took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and traveled up to Judea, to a town of David, called Bethlehem, since he was David's house and line, in order to be registered together with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in the swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. In the countryside close by there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took in turns to watch their flocks during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were terrified. But the angel said, Do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you news of great joy, 
a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly, with the angel there, was a great throne of heavenly hosts praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace to men who enjoy his favour. The Gospel of the Lord. The census that Caesar Augustus decreed was basically a tax imposition. By ordering the counting of the population according to their location, the emperor could then impose a set tax on each town, village, region and city throughout the empire. You would hardly call this a fair taxation policy, but it was certainly an effective one. He had the power. Augustus was the first of the Roman emperors to declare himself a god. These were the times when the gods were measured by their power over people's lives. The more powerful, the more godly. That Augustus could impose a tax regime on the whole world revealed the extent of his godlike powers. Yet, like all powerful people, he weakened in his reign and eventually died, to be forgotten except in history books and museums. Power over people's lives does not last. When the one true God came among us, the promised Messiah, he would be in the most minor of locations where the census was being taken. Bethlehem, an all but forgotten town, a nowhere place in the vast Roman Empire. And even then, it would take place at the lowest end of that lowly town in a stable, not a home, and in an animal's trough, not a bed. Yet, here is the true sign of God. The God who would not seek to depart from humanity, but one who would take on our humanity. In Bethlehem, during the first census ever taken, Emmanuel, God with us, was born. 
and he has endured. For his power abides in people's lives. A prayer I recently heard put it this way. Jesus, when the soles of your feet touched the ground, you become one of us to be at one with us. This image of the bare feet of God touching the same earth on which we make our homes is the true sign of godliness. For in the birth of Jesus, the divinity of God was born into our humanity humbly, unassumingly. In a stable, God came to us withholding nothing of himself from us. Barefooted, taking on our flesh, our human condition, in order to touch and to be touched in the reality of our lives. Christmas is God placing an exclamation mark on his words I am with you. Jesus, God with us, did not claim divinity for himself, but emptied himself for our sake, as St. Paul masterfully described it. God stepped into our humanity at the lowest point on earth. At the very moment Augustus was flexing his muscles in a power play from on high, Jesus entered the world from below, humbly finding a place in amongst our mess. God casts the mighty from their thrones, said Jesus' mother, and raises the lowly. This inversion of power from the beginning of his humanity would continue through to his end. The humble wood of the manger would be replaced with the humbling wood of the cross. Yet our barefooted God, who bent down from heaven to touch the earth, showed that this way of humility is also our way. He conquered by humbling himself. He healed through his own wounds. He reigned from below. God saved us by sacrificing himself. The way of power does not triumph. History is full of the debris of failed attempts. It is rather grace that illumines the way, joy that overcomes sadness, and love that pierces the dark. So I wonder if this Christmas it is not time for us to come barefooted in our frailties and troubled spirits before this little child who is God among us. It is in him that we may find ourselves alive again in his image ready to live as he created us to, hospitable and generous, 
forgiving and hopeful. So may Jesus, the barefooted child of the living God, fill you and your loved ones with abundant joy and peace. Happy Christmas. As we profess our faith this evening, I invite you in your places to make a bow, a special bow at the, pla at the moment when uh, we say the words, by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. And so let us profess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And as we gather this evening to celebrate the birth of our Saviour, Christ the Lord, let us open our hearts in prayer for the needs of our world and our community. We pray for Pope Francis and all the leaders of the church as we celebrate the feast of Christmas. May their example of love and mercy shine through the world and show the real meaning of Christmas. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the leaders throughout the world that in justice they will allow all Christians to celebrate the Incarnation and demonstrate the importance of Jesus in their lives and the life of the world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the poor and marginalized. Give those around them the gifts of charity and compassion so that help may be authentic and valued. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those gathered here. May we be a sign of Christ's glory and hope in the world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those away from family during Christmas time, that they experience God's love through the love and care of those around them and feel comfort in God's presence. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick and for all who have asked for our prayers. We pray for those who have died recently 
especially Stephen Macaulay and those whose anniversaries we remember at this time, especially Maria Chong, Laurie Haber, Rose Caruana, Flora and Eric Cortling, Rosanna and Paolo Capilano, that those who have died may ever share in the eternal light of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Pray for peace in our world, for the people of Ukraine, Myanmar, Ethiopia, and so many other places in our world at the moment where violence and war is at play. May our prayer help to move those hearts needed towards peace. Lord, hear us. God of love, you reveal yourself to us fully in Jesus, your Son. We celebrate the gift of your love and offer our prayer to you with faith in our hearts through Christ our Lord.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the Lord. O oh God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendour of the true light, may the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O oh Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognise in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to guard and grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my brother auxiliary bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. 
celebrating the most sacred night, on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Lydus, Clatus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through the merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, his precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For our Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, 
Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us turn to one another and offer that gift of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honourable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. So many people here this evening, I suppose it's a testament to our resilience um, uh, that we've gotten through COVID and we can actually gather in, in great numbers again. So thank you for being here this evening uh, and celebrating the Nativity of our Lord. Uh, it's a wonderful occasion. Thank you also to many of the people who, are, who work so tire tirelessly behind the scenes. Um, our volunteer, many volunteers, readers, Eucharist ministers, mus and musicians, um, organists, directors of music, uh, cantors, and of course our splendid choir in fabulous voice tonight. They were marvellous tonight, weren't they, don't you think? Yes. <laughs> our technical crew who enable um, the masses to be streamed, thank you. Our um, Auslang people who, who are able to uh, translate for the hearing impaired, so thank you for your contribution to our celebrations throughout the year here at St Patrick's. To our parish staff, both um, in the office and uh, the priests here on staff, Father Alex, Father Michael, our MC, um, Father Philip, who's only new, and uh, of course the Archbishop, so thank you, who occasionally comes here and says Mass. So thanks, uh, Your Grace, for your presence and leadership amongst us here in the Archdiocese. I wish you all a very happy, safe and holy Christmas with you and your families. And I might say my own word of thanks to uh, the Dean of the Cathedral, Father Werner Utri, who uh, is tireless in his work and leadership uh, here amongst us all. So, th Father Werner, thank you very much. Um, and if I can acknowledge in a particular way those of you who have been uh, all year long, but especially tonight, been present uh, virtually on our live streaming uh, on TV, uh, and it's great that you are able to be present in this manner as well. Uh, so, thank you for your presence. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illuminated this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. May God, who willed that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to the shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favour and make you sharers with the church in heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the gospel by your lives. Happy Christmas. <laughs>